Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you. I want to thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do here. I want to thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord, you're going to do in our lives and in the lives of those who are watching us online. Help us, Lord, to keep our minds here, focus on what you have to share with us. May your Holy Spirit feel free in our midst, opening our minds, opening our heart, for us to understand your word, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, like before coming to Canada, I thought that you Canadians were used to snow. But it seems like not, because half of the church did not show up today. <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, with this shirt, I'm almost a Canadian, right? <laughs> Holy Spirit's protection for my life. Well, I have been talking, me and Jim, about the Holy Spirit all these Sundays. And I've been talking about relationship with the Holy Spirit, seeking Holy Spirit, allowing Holy Spirit in our lives, right? But what I want to share with you today is something that has to be part of your inner thoughts, the trust in the Lord. One thing that we as Christians have that for me it's amazing, so different than any other thing, is we can have hope in God. So when things are really up, or when you really are in deep trouble, you, you look around you, no way to solve that, now I'm in trouble. You have the hope that God can change things. This hope, only we Christians that believe in God and have the Holy Spirit in Jesus may have it. This is awesome, right? However, however, I believe that one thing that we all have in common is that in our journey here on earth, there are some times in our lives, that we feel abandoned by God. Few things happen in our lives, and we look around. We're surrounded by trouble, by problems. We see no way out. We pray to God. It seems like it's not listening. Have you been there? Have you been there in a place where, hey, God, did you forget about me? Did you, did, did you abandon me? I, I, I'm praying. I'm talking to you. I see no changes. It seems like I'm surrounded by evilness. And you don't care. You cry. And you do not understand, but it seems like God abandoned you. I have felt this in my life a few times. A few times I, I had to face a few things that I couldn't understand why. I couldn't understand why I had to go through that. And I couldn't understand why I was asking for him to put an end on that thing, and he didn't. Why, God, where are you? And that's what I want to talk to you today. Because we do not see the full picture. Right? And somehow we may believe that living in this earth before we go to heaven with him, because we have him, this journey here on this earth, will be a very paved way. No issues at all because I have the Lord. It's not like that. 
This is an evil world. We have illness, we have suffering, we have pain, we have a lot of things surrounding us that can reach us. But then we have the Lord. Well, what I have learned is that I don't see the whole picture. One day I saw a nice picture that was a grandma knitting. Right? So, from above, it was a very beautiful picture she was needing. And her grandson was underneath, on her legs, looking. All those things on the other side of the knitting thing, right? He couldn't see anything beautiful. He could not understand because he was not seeing the whole picture. But grandma was looking from above, was seeing the whole thing. God! see our past, God see our present, and God see our future because God is timeless. When I go, what I learn, I want to share with you, is that when I go through some difficulties, some troubles, I pray to God and I know what I want, God, come and solve the issue for me, please. And God said, uh-uh, you know what? Problems like this, when I see your timeline, you're going to face about five or six times again. And I don't want to make, I don't want to come and so very issue. I want to teach you how to be strong and be able to go beyond in your trust with me, walking with me in such a way that you get stronger. And when problems like this come, you will be able to face those problems not fainting or crying like you are now. I want to make you stronger. I want to help you. Because you know what? I love you. It's just like, I can imagine, like my love for my boys are not even close to the love of God for me. But I don't want to do everything to my, God, to my kids. I want to teach them to do it. Because I know what's expecting them outside. I need to make them strong. I need to prepare them. Right? So, when I understand this, I say, wow, God, so I have to go through things? And then God tells, well, have you ever read my book? One day, I, sh I came to a, a son of mine called Moses. Right? No, sorry, Noah. And said, hey, Noah, build the ark because I'm going to bring rain. What did Noah did? Start building the ark. No rain for 120 years. The word says that for 120 years, Noah was building the ark. God was not there every time. Come, hey, Noah, how is that? Wow, cool, huh? You're doing good. No. God is quiet. God was not talking to Noah. Build it, I'll bring rain. Keep my eyes on you. Noah, build the ark and wait. When he finished the ark, God, oh, he finished. Rain, come. David, King David. The greatest king of the scripture, before Jesus, of course. <laughs> David, while a kid, the prophet came and anointed him. I'm king now, guys. Bow before me. No. He had to go out, take care of the sheep, and then he had to kill a lion. Wow, you kill a lion. Now you're good. I'm going to send you a bear. And then he killed a bear. Well, now you're good. Now you can even defeat the giant. And then he killed Goliath. Wow, you know, you, I have been practicing you, training you for so many years. Trouble, trouble, you're getting stronger. Now that you killed Goliath, now you can deal with Saul. Because King Saul will persecute you. I've been preparing you for what I have to you. 
And then you will be able to see with my eyes, to love with my love, and even to love your enemy. Because that guy is going to try to kill you. So now you're prepared to be a king. Right? Joseph, I'm going to give a dream. Awesome dream. Wow, I'm going to be that guy. Yes, everybody will bow before you. Wow, I'm the one. Yeah. Guys, don't show him the whole picture, okay? Just the, the thing. Because he had to be slave. He had to go to the prison. He has to be down there in the dungeon. Or one day be prepared to save his own own people, the people of God, because he was the one who could have ideas and create a system to protect and have meal, food for everyone. Process happen in our lives. We call trouble, God calls process. And it's not easy. It's not easy because, you know why it's not easy? Because we do not understand. That's why we don't understand why I have to go through a few things. Why God doesn't answer me when I call. Why I don't see God is acting in my favor right now. You know, like I heard from a pastor Brazil, I like it. Like this kind of God and me and relationship. Uh... Sometimes I, I call my mom in Brazil on WhatsApp. You guys should use WhatsApp. It's awesome. I call my mom, and she answers, Hi, I was thinking of you the whole day and praying for you. How would I know that my mom was thinking of me and praying for me the whole day if I didn't have called her? I call her, and then she told me, right? I see people getting mad with God because they don't see God work in their favor. So I want to turn my back to God. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I cannot even pray. I cannot talk to God. I'm mad with him. Really? He abandoned me. He's not thinking of me. Have you been talking to him? Have you been talking to him? I love this. But when you pray, go into a room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Who is what? Unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So, some things call attention here for me in this verse. First, pray to God that is unseen. A lot of time, you will pray, I will pray, I will not feel anything. Not every time that I pray, I feel the presence of the Lord falling upon me, I start to shake. You know, not all the time. Not all the time I feel God. Not all the time I see God. Sometimes He's totally unseen. But you know what happened? Your father who sees what is done in secret reward you. But he is seeing. He is listening to me. Even when I'm not seeing him. And I love this part. What is done in secret. You know what is done in secret? How I take my life when no one sees me. When I'm a thousand K from home. Apart from everyone. Who is Alex there? Huh? No one is watching me. God is. What I do when I'm doing those things that no one is seeing me, no one will even know what I'm doing. God is. How is my life in secret? Because there's a verse on some that says that when God, like a John 9, 31, I didn't put it here, like a, we know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. John, book of John, Old New Testament. What is saying? Guys, I'm seeing you all the time. But when I see you, 
It's not that I want the, the holy, perfect person. You're not perfect. Because, in fact, my sin, how can I say that? When I sin, it doesn't bother God that much. You know what bothers God? When I realize that I sin, what do I do? My reaction to my sin. When I do things, oh, look, God, look what I did. How do I react to that? That's what God wants to see. You know, we were worshiping the Lord here, right? And you see the scripture. Adore the God, adore God, adore the Lord, adore, adore, worship, worship, adore, adore, worship, worship, all the time, all the time. And then you may think, wow, a God that is almighty God, the creator of the world, so big guy that loves me and made everything. Why he's so like a, this kind of thing, adore me? Why he needs me to keep adoring and worshiping him? Right? <laughs> you know what I learned? You look like what you worship. When you are a teenager and you have a uh, rock idol, you, you dress like him. <laughs> You worship, you want to be like him. Everything you love, everything you adore, you naturally become just like that. So when God asks, hey, Alex, adore me and worship me, he's not doing this because of him, he's doing that because of me. Because he loves me so much that he wants me to be like him. When, when he looks at you, he looks at you, he wants you to be like him. So he said, hey, worship me, adore me, because then you'll be like me. That's why we worship the Lord. Not because he needs it. We need it. We need it. When you pray. Right? I love this. Faith. You know, I start talking today. Saying that. We have a hope. <coughs> we have hope when everything comes. Whoa. We have hope. Our hope is totally connect on our faith. Right? I have faith that God is with me. He will protect me. He will be with me, empower me, help me to be strong. I have faith. And then trouble come. Trouble come, I don't see that magical thing happening, and out of a sudden my faith is not really, really that strong. Right? Now, the faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You don't have to see how it's going to happen to have faith. You don't have to understand God. Who said you will? Things doesn't have to be mindful, accepted, like, okay, I have to understand how God's going to do that. So I will have hope. No, faith is, I hope something happens. I have no idea how it's going to do. It's impossible for a man. But I have hope in him. Okay, Alex, my hope is not that big. How can I make it? Consequently, this is in Hebrews 11, okay, if you just want to go with me. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Your faith, my faith will increase when we read the scripture, when we listen to preaching, we, we, when we are part of church. When we fight against ourselves and be there and reading and studying. I remember in my life, I can share this with you guys. I remember in my life when I start reading uh, all the Bible, right? And then I jump into the stories of 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, Kings, right? Chronicles. And that all, the whole part of the book is about kings and God's protecting them and them getting in trouble and God's protecting them. Well, when I started reading that, my faith really increased because, wow, look what God has done. So, my advice for you is you want to increase your faith. 
start to read and start studying the scripture. Start listening about it. And then your faith will rise up. Right? Uh, that's one psalm that I want to read with you. Psalms 18. Here is King David writing to Psalm. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord. I recognize you, my strength. I recognize that my strength comes from you. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. He is declaring that because he knows. It doesn't mean that it's happening. He's declaring because he knows faith. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. Look where this guy was. The cords of death entangle me. The torrents of destruction overwhelm me. The cords of the grave coil around me. The snare of death confronted me. In my distress, I call to the Lord. I cry to my God for help. Maybe you can see yourself just like this. And then, from his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a special place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Not this one. David was sharing here. Hey guys, I was in deep trouble. Impossible for any man to get out of there. But I, since day one, I have faith in God. And I know he would rescue me. Do you think that during this time he was here? Do you think he, he felt God was with him all the time? Probably not. Psalms 23rd. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We, lo we love the way it starts, right? I'm walking the green pastures, right? He make a path for me in the green pasture. But the point is, even though, even though, you know what happened to me and you? We walk through darkest valley. Are you there? Maybe you are. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You mean what mean your rod and your staff is? You're not going to do the way I want. You're not going to just solve my problem. But you are with me. You make me stronger. You teach me. You open my eyes. I have seen people. You know people, some people are just more sens sensitive, more, I don't know if I could, should use the word weak. When troubles come, they just have time to, uh, a hard time to face it. You know, when trouble comes, they just stop it, right? And I've seen people like that becoming so strong in their lives. Because God work on them. Not in an easy way. It's not in an easy way. It was hard. Just shared this with you. A few weeks before... I was told I had cancer. My wife was praying. Holy Spirit just came to her and said, I'm going to make you stronger. She said, what? I'm going to make you stronger. And she said to me, he said, you know, God told me he's going to make you, me stronger. I don't know what's, what's coming. I don't know what's going to happen. Out of a sudden, bam! 
cancer. Wow. He had to go to walk there with me in the darkest valley. What I want to share with you, what I want you to understand, I'm going to put a video for you here. What I want you to understand is God loves you. Isaiah 49. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. You're not abandoned. You're not forgotten. You're not forsaken. Even if you don't see him, even if you're going through so hard times, you feel like you're abandoned. You're not. He's working on you. He's holding your hand. He's making you strong. Because what he has for you, you have to be strong. What he has for me, I have to go beyond. I have to be stronger. You have to be strong because people have to see him in you. And he has to work in you. We don't understand the way he does. But one thing I understand. He will never, he will never forsake me. I may, I may, but he won't. I know that my God is for me. Doesn't matter what people tell me. Doesn't matter what's going on around me. Doesn't matter because I know one thing that you, Lord, are there for me. And this, no one can take me from me. No one. No one. He is for me. I really want you to watch this video I'm going to put down here. And by the end of the video, I'm going to ask my worship team to come and play a song. And then I will pray for you. I will pray with you. Watch this video. Everybody has a hero. Okay. Come on. Mine's my dad. <laughs> yes, I can. Since mom died, Go. it's only been us. He has a way of filling my life with color. Dad, which one? That one. Sometimes I don't understand his advice, but I trust him. And what always brought us together <laughs> was our love for running. One day, I'll be faster than him. And when I am, I'm gonna win every marathon in the world. Abby? What's wrong, champ? Or at least that was my plan. I'm losing my sight. And real quick, read to me the lowest level that you can see on there. What is called is interocular melanoma. Eye cancer. Unfortunately, you will lose your vision. That was the day my father disappeared. Okay. Come on. Dad! Wakey, wakey. Ready to run, champ? Come on. I thought he would always be there for me. I guess I was wrong. Dad, where are you? You abandoned me. Where are you, Dad? Where did you go? Do you not love me anymore? Am I still beautiful? Are you no longer proud of me? How could you leave me when I need you the most? Dad. Dad. Dad, why did you leave me? 
Abby thinks I've left her. And as much as it pains me to hear that, she's right. I've left her. The best that we can do is can save the please? actual eye so that cosmetically she doesn't lose them. That's my girl. That's my girl. That's my little girl. There's support groups, and I know this is a very difficult time. No! I've left her to realize she's more courageous than she ever imagined. I've left her to discover how beautiful she is from the inside out. I've left her to challenge herself in ways she never considered. I've left her to discover how strong she really is. Baby. Why did you leave me? I was right here. I was always here. Where did you go? I was always here, baby. Listen, no one believes in you more than I do. You know that. far you've come. Don't you, baby? Yeah. My dad says he gave me what I needed. Not what I wanted. You ready? Yeah. Folks, what we're seeing here is amazing. This is a testament of true love. Love is allowing someone to see their true worth and beauty. I used to think my dreams were over. I thought I'd never run again. And even though I can't see my dad, I know he's guiding me the entire way. You are more than your story. I heard this, this phrase, you are more than your story. God is protecting you. God is work on you. God is making you stronger. He never step away from you. Not for a second. Not for a second. Even when you're not seeing, he was there holding your hand. He was there with you. But one day, when you realize this, when you realize that, wow, I got my dad with me. He's just making me stronger. You start enjoying his presence, even not seeing him. You start enjoying walk with him and live with him, even if your eyes don't see him. But you feel him. You hold his hand. He will be there with you. You don't understand why, and you don't have to. You just have to trust that your father never abandoned you. I'd like to invite you to stand up and worship the Lord. When you worship the Lord, sing this song, talk to him. So open your heart, talk to him like a son, like a daughter to his father, to her father. Just, just talk and feel it. Enjoy the presence of the Lord. 